Dream Chaser is one of the most underrated and often untalked about space vehicles that are soon to be operational. Maybe I like it so much because of its cargo capacity. Or maybe I just like the way it looks. Either way, before I start talking about Dream Chaser, first I need to talk about the commercial crew program. Imagine, for a moment, that you are President Barack Obama. Uh, let me be clear. The year is 2010, and the Space Shuttle only has one year left of operation before it's retired. The shuttle ended up being far too impractical to continue operating. Since you're spending far too much money drone striking civilians in foreign countries to spare NASA the money it would need to develop its own replacement space vehicle, instead you contract private companies to develop and fly cargo and crew to the International Space Station. These programs would be the Commercial Crew Program for Crew and Commercial Resupply Services, or CRS, for cargo. So Phase 1 of Commercial Crew Funding, also known as CCDEV1, awarded $18 million to Boeing, which at the time had the second highest profits from war of any company. $6.7 million was awarded to United Launch Alliance, half of which is owned by Boeing, the other half is owned by the company that profits the most from war, Lockheed Martin. What you might not know is that another company by the name of Sierra Nevada Corporation, which also does a small amount of war profiteering, was awarded $20 million. CCDEV2 awarded $113 million to Boeing, $105 million to Sierra Nevada Corporation, which for my sanity I will refer to as SNC for the rest of this video, and NASA also awarded $75 million to this company here. This company is bad because it doesn't profit from war. CCDEV3, later called CCI Cap, was the last major dishing out of money before NASA selected its finalists. If your launch vehicle wasn't developed enough after this round of funding, you wouldn't be contracted to fly crew to the ISS, potentially missing out on billions of dollars. $480 million went to Boeing for Starliner, $460 million went to the bad company for this stupid looking thing that will never work, and $227 million went to SNC for their Dream Chaser space plane. Okay, so we didn't get as much as the other contractors for our proposal, that's fine. We've made some pretty decent progress. We have a former space shuttle commander working for us, we've had a free flight drop test, Sure, the left landing gear failed to deploy, but the crew compartment was completely intact and all the systems were still working. And look, the first composite piece of the actual flight Dream Chaser has already been manufactured. Don't worry guys, I'm sure NASA will select us for crewed flights. What could go wrong? NASA selects Starliner and Dragon 2 for crewed flights. Boeing is awarded 4.2 billion and SpaceX gets 2.6 billion. Sierra Nevada Corporation has been cock-blocked. In total, Boeing was awarded $5.1 billion for Starliner. SpaceX was awarded $3.14 billion for Dragon 2. Starliner costs $90 million per seat, $10 million more than Soyuz, and Dragon 2 costs $55 million per seat. It would be really embarrassing if Starliner still hadn't flown crew, or even docked with the ISS, despite having $2 billion more in contract money from NASA, and costing $35 million more than SpaceX per seat. But no, SpaceX is the one who is wasting taxpayer money. Dream Chaser has been in development for almost two decades now. It was first publicly announced in 2004, but it is heavily based on the cancelled HL-20 personnel launch system. The farthest into development the HL-20 got was only a mock-up that was constructed way, way back in 1990. Dream Chaser was designed to be able to launch on a variety of different launch vehicles, including the Atlas V, Falcon 9, Ariane 5, and the Japanese H-2B, though SNC ended up selecting Vulcan as their launch vehicle of choice. For crew, Dream Chaser would launch without a fairing and would have a full envelope abort window. In the event of an abort, it would use its two hybrid rocket motors for propulsion and then land on a nearby runway. Hybrid rocket motors are relatively unused in terms of spaceflight. They use a combination of solid and liquid fuels to produce thrust. Unlike solid rocket motors, they can be throttled and turned off. Generally speaking, they also have a higher efficiency than normal solid motors. However, a similar engine was used on Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2, and in 2014, one of these space planes had a very severe accident, killing one of its two test pilots. SNC announced that they would no longer be using hybrid motors for propulsion. Instead, they would use a cluster of Orbitex Vortex engines on either side of Dream Chaser. These engines would use propane and nitrous oxide as propellants. 
So, after Dream Chaser was snubbed by NASA for commercial crew, SNC was given an olive branch in the form of being selected for CRS2, baby, that's right. Dream Chaser joined the exclusive team of Cargo Dragon and Cygnus in the role of supplying cargo and providing garbage disposal for the ISS. NASA contracted SNC to provide six resupply flights to the ISS, scheduled to start in 2022, after the Demo-1 flight on the second ever Vulcan to be launched. The CRS-2 cargo version of Dream Chaser features folding wings to allow it to fit inside of a 5 meter fairing. It will also feature an expendable cargo module named the Shooting Star Module. You can kind of think of this as the trunk on a Dragon capsule because it features solar panels, radiators and burns up on re-entry. The major difference between the two is that the Shooting Star module is pressurized, meaning that altogether, Dream Chaser can carry 5 tons of pressurized payload to the ISS, and an additional 500 kilograms of unpressurized payload mounted on the outside of the Shooting Star module. So, how does Dream Chaser compare to other cargo vehicles? Cygnus has a payload capacity to the ISS of 2 tons. Progress has a payload capacity of 2.4 tons. Cargo Dragon has a capacity of 6 tons, and Dream Chaser has a capacity of 5.5 tons. Since both Progress and Cygnus are expendable and burn up on re-entry, I'll obviously only compare the return payload stats of Cargo Dragon and Dream Chaser. So, Cargo Dragon can return 3 tons of pressurized cargo to Earth, and can dispose of 800 kilograms of unpressurized cargo via the trunk. Dream Chaser can return 1.75 tons of pressurized cargo to Earth, and can dispose of up to 3.2 tons of either pressurized or unpressurized cargo via the shooting star. As it turns out, Dream Chaser can carry the second most cargo to the station and can dispose of the most trash out of all these vehicles. Dream Chaser fills a pretty big niche for cargo. As of the time Dream Chaser will be operational, there are only a few vehicles that can return cargo to Earth. Soyuz, Starliner, Dragon 2, and Dream Chaser. Soyuz lands on land using parachutes and a retro rocket. Starliner also lands on land but uses parachutes and airbags. And Dragon 2 splashes down in the ocean using parachutes. Dream Chaser can land on any runway long enough for commercial jetliners, and experiences a maximum g-force of only 1.5 g's. The capsules on the other hand experience around 4 g's during re-entry, and then a short spike of a bit more than that when they land. Dream Chaser does not have to worry about that. Now, you might be wondering why minimizing g-force is important, especially if it's just for cargo. Well, some returning experiments can be damaged by high g-forces. A perfect example of this would be organ growing. For certain organs, they can only be grown in microgravity, and I'm not sure if you know this, but organs can be quite fragile. So you might want to avoid this, and instead go with this. Another thing that is less important for the Cargo Dream Chaser, but very important for the crewed version, which SNC has confirmed as of 2021 they are still working on, is the propellants it uses. Propane and nitrous oxide for the engines, and ethanol for the reaction control thrusters. These propellants are completely non-toxic and non-corrosive, unlike the hypergolic fuels used by both Dragon 2 and Starliner. This means that, unlike its two competitors, Dream Chaser doesn't need to be checked by ground crew and specialized equipment for toxic hypergolic fuels before the crew can leave the vehicle. This is brilliant for emergency scenarios, as it means any potential medical or fire support can be offered immediately. So, all in all, Dream Chaser offers a promising cargo capacity, with room for both pressurized and unpressurized payloads. It also has the ability to dispose of trash during re-entry, and offers a comfortable landing for sensitive cargo. As of writing, Dream Chaser is scheduled to launch in quarter two of 2022. Let's hope that date doesn't slip again.